I'm not sure what summer it was, but it was on the 4th of July weekend. When some folks new to boating were having some troubles, no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't get their brand new 22-foot boat going right. It was very sluggish in every maneuver. And no matter how much power they gave it, So after about an hour, they, they kind of put into a local marina, thinking that maybe they could help them figure out what was, was going wrong. Well, topside check revealed that nothing was, nothing was wrong. Everything was working perfectly. The engine ran right. The, the updrive went up and down. The props were correct size and pitch. So one of the... Uh, Marina guys jumped in and went underneath the check. And he came up choking on water like because he was laughing so hard, you know. I want you to remember this is true. There's YouTube video to corroborate this tale. Under the boat, still strapped securely in place, was the trailer. Just thought you should know who's on the road with you during this 4th of July weekend. Peter said in his second chapter of his first letter, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Here at only in the sanctuary behind me when I'm preaching are two flags to which we pledge our allegiances both of which have a strong hold upon their faithful. Case, case in point, William, Captain William Driver. Captain Driver was a ship master in Salem, Massachusetts. He's the one who coined the, the phrase about the U.S. flag as Old Glory in 1831. As he was leaving on one of his many voyage, voyages, aboard his ship, the Charles Doggett. Some friends presented him with a beautiful flag of 24 stars. How many stars we had in those days. And as the banner opened and the ocean breathed for the first time, Captain Driver exclaimed, Old Glory. I don't know exactly how he said it, but it stuck. Captain Driver retired to Nashville in 1837 taking his treasured flag from his sea days with him. By the time the Civil War erupted, most everyone in and around Nashville recognized Captain Driver's old glory. When Tennessee seceded from the Union, rebel soldiers were determined to destroy his flag, but repeated searches revealed no trace of the, of the now hated banner. Then on February 25th in 1862, Union forces captured Nashville and raised the American flag over the Capitol. It was rather small and, and immediately folks began asking Captain Driver if Old Glory still existed. After you have soldiers with him this time, Captain Driver went home and began ripping the seams of his bed cover and as the stitches holding the quilt top to the batting unraveled, the onlookers peered inside and saw the 24-star original Old Glory. Captain Driver gently gathered up the flag and, and returned with the soldiers to the capital. Though he was 60 years old, the captain climbed up the, the tower to replace the smaller banner with his beloved flag. 
The sixth Ohio red the sixth Ohio regiment cheered and saluted and later atop, adopted the nickname Old Glory as their own. What is it about a piece of fabric that can be such an inspiration, engender such devotion? Well, some will tell you flags are symbols, but flags are more than mere symbols. Their color and design convey past history and future goals. Flags have a powerful connotation. They, they call us. Calvin Coolidge reminded us of this, and thus of the meaning of our flag, saying, when we look at our flag and behold it emblazed with our, all of our rights, we must remember that it's equal, it equally is symbol of all our duties. Every glory that we associate with it is the result of duty done. These two flags label us. They, they portray our two allegiances. The Christian flag tells us who and whose we are. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Native Americans had a rite of passage for all boys when they turned 13. Some called Huskanaw. On the night of the first teenage birthday, the teenagers are blindfolded and taken several miles from the village. The, warrior, the warriors leave this new teenager alone in the dense, dark forest. He would be forced to stay the night there and fend for himself through, throughout the night. The darkness seemed endless as wild animals howled and the, the wind made weird noises and the rustling of leaves sound, sounded a lot like approaching enemies. After enduring a night without rest or sleep, the dawn would finally begin to break. And the young teen would see the forest for what it really was, flowers blooming, tall majestic trees swaying in the breeze, wildlife scurrying for food. To his utter, utter surprise though, he would come to see an imposing male figure standing just a few yards away. Unbeknownst to the scared warrior, his father had been there the whole night, ready to protect his son against any wilds of the forest. No matter what experience we undergo, God stands there with us, even when we are unaware of his divine presence and protection. The Christian flag tells us who and whose we are. God is our Father and he is standing with us. Once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. The American flag tells us where we are called to serve as God's people. It calls us to witness to our our God in our primary mission field. A traveling man came into a hotel to secure a room for the night. Upon being informed that every room in the building had been taken, he was naturally quite perturbed. Until a portly gentleman standing nearby kindly offered to share his room with him. The offer was thankfully accepted. Upon retiring, the portly man knelt and prayed, tenderly mentioning his guest for the night in his petitions. In the morning, his host informed him that it was his custom to read a portion of the scripture and, and pray before taking on the responsibilities of the day. The effect upon the man was moving. A strange feeling came over him. Something had been working at him all night. 
and when gently pressed by this stranger to accept the Lord Jesus as his personal Savior, his resistance went down in a heap, and the soul had been won for Christ. So who was this humble ambassador of Christ? Well, when business cards were exchanged before parting, the guest's amazement was there when he read William Jennings Bryant, Secretary of State. We are chosen, each one of us, to witness to the gospel where God places us, to serve here in this nation as a representative of the humble servant healer who gave his life for peace, justice, and love. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.